What is your specialty again? Chemical weapons. Don't mention that. Let's talk about some of mankind's most horrifying inventions. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the top 5 facts about chemical weapons. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Come along as we explore these terrifying substances and the unnerving realistic threat they pose to our modern world. And just a warning, this video may include some graphic imagery. <laughs> Number 5, it has some grisly subcategories. Not all chemical weapons are created equal, but they are awful in their own special way. The various chemical methods of inflicting serious bodily harm or bringing about excruciating death generally fall into four categories. Choking agents, like chlorine or phosphine gas, result in suffocation. Blistering agents, such as mustard gas, are chemical irritants that cause extreme skin blisters. Blood agents, typically cyanide or arsenic-based, make it so that oxygen cannot be properly transported in the blood. Last, and perhaps most sickening, are nerve agents. Absorbed through the skin or lungs, even a small dose of such a chemical, like sarin gas, can wreak havoc on the nervous system with severe lifelong side effects. Alright. Number four, there are countries that haven't signed the chemical weapons ban. There's been some effort to comply with the chemical weapons convention. Considering how inhumane chemical weapons are, it's little surprise that the international community has a long history of coming together to agree not to use them. As of today, most of the world's governments support the chemical weapons convention. As of 2016, it's estimated that roughly 93% of the world's stockpile has been destroyed. What is surprising, however, is the fact that a few countries have refused to get on board. While Israel has signed the treaty, they have yet to ratify it. Syria and Angolia finally became parties to the treaty in 2013 and 2016 respectively. This leaves just three countries, Egypt, North Korea and South Sudan, who have taken no steps towards joining the rest of the world on this issue. Number three, there are some disconcerting weapons not banned. <laughs> While the 1997 Chemical Weapons Convention is by far the most successful and detail-oriented treaty of its kind, it's not without its shortcomings. Some of the biggest outliers include napalm and white phosphorus. The latter is allowed on the grounds that it be used to create a camouflaging smoke and not as a weapon. What this ignores, however, are the numerous indirect effects it can have even in that application, such as toxic fumes and deadly burns. As for napalm, it is allegedly used primarily as an incendiary, and not as a chemical. I love the smell of napalm in the morning! Another curious group omitted are biological weapons. While they do have their own treaty, the Biological Weapons Convention, it lacks any sort of verification or monitoring system. Number two, the short and long-term effects. Vomiting, severe muscle twitches, and then death by choking on their own vomit. One cannot truly grasp the horrors of chemical warfare without taking a look at the grisly details. Pulmonary agents fill your lungs with fluids, giving one the feeling that they are drowning from the inside. Nerve agents often prove deadly, and should you receive a fatal dose, your remaining minutes will likely be spent violently seizuring and twitching as your nervous system collapses. Mustard gas, on the other hand, is a latent killer with long-term side effects. According to the CDC, only 5% of people exposed to it in World War I died. The many individuals affected, however, were often severely disfigured and suffered chronic respiratory conditions later in life. Mustard gas goes more than skin deep, actually damaging human DNA. As a result, the likelihood of birth defects among children born to those exposed are much higher. <laughs> Number one, it's been used more recently than you think. How? By dropping sarin gas on the village. According to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, over 98% of the world's population lives within the territories that respect the Chemical Weapons Convention. And yet, they are still used to this day. We tend to think of examples involving terrorists, like Om Shirinkyo's use of sarin gas in the 1995 Tokyo subway attack, or the reported use of chlorine and mustard gas by ISIS since 2014 in both Syria and Iraq. But the most recent display of chemical weapons wasn't an act of terrorism, it was allegedly the work of a government, more specifically, the Syrian government. Worse yet, it was carried out in residential, civilian areas. 